Welcome to RWM Blue Water Ministry. I'm your host Bob Manuk and we are continuing in our series on the Holy Spirit. And uh, so I'll just remind you, uh, this, today we're on part three. Uh, previously we did part one uh, and covered the promise of the Holy Spirit. Then we did part two last time, which was the deposit of the Holy Spirit. Today we're going to do the, uh, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And uh, part four will be receiving the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And part five will be the gifts of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> so we will start off uh, in part three, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We're going to start off looking at Romans chapter 14, verse 17. <clears throat> For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Romans 15, 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So, what we established last time is that if you are in Christ, if you have asked for forgiveness and, and asked, asked Jesus to forgive your sins, and declared him Lord of your life, then you've been born again. The Spirit of God has breathed life into your spirit. And then you automatically have a deposit of the Holy Spirit in you. And so that's what we're looking at today is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the attributes of the Holy Spirit that is in you. And in the last verse that we read there, it was talking about um, goodness and peace and joy. And in this verse that we just we sort of talked about, again, joy and peace uh, as you trust in him. And we will overflow with confident hope. So you, you see these, these attributes that are, come with the Holy Spirit. Hope, joy, peace. Uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, uh, verse 22 and 23, is uh, the main scripture that uh, talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It says in verse 22, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So it is mentioned in that list nine attributes of the Holy Spirit. And uh, these attributes of the Holy Spirit... <laughs> If you are in Christ, if you've been born again, the Holy Spirit is in you. The deposit of the Holy Spirit, and that means the fruit of the Holy Spirit is in you. Um, so, uh, like, let, me, let me just use a gardening phrase here, or example type thing, right? If you, if you plant any kind, anything in your garden, when you're going to dig up the, the ground, you're going to put a uh, seed, bulb, whatever, a small plant, whatever, in there. Uh, you're going to water that plant. You're going to uh, dig up the dirt just to make sure it's broken up and, and it's good soil. And you're going to do what you can to feed that soil and uh, make sure it gets sunlight and water and the things. You're, you're going to tend to it. You're going to tend to it. It's going to grow. Well, you've got fruit in your heart. If, if you are in Christ, if Jesus is your Lord and Savior, then you have a deposit of the Holy Spirit. And the attributes of the Holy Spirit in you has the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So you've got it all. Now, you may not feel like you got it all, but you know what? We don't, we don't function in our lives based on how we feel. The Word of God is truth, and the Holy Spirit will reveal truth to us. And the Word of God says that the deposit of the Holy Spirit in you already has it. It says that the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace. There's three. Patience, kindness, goodness, there's three. Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, there's three. So there's nine attributes of the Holy Spirit that is in you already. So all of these can be at work in your life. Now you, you may not just all of a sudden start walking maturity and have all, all nine of these functioning. And you may have to start concentrating on, on the first few and, and, and just focus on that and get them active and put it into practice so that it becomes a reality in your life so that you are walking in love and joy and peace. There's times that Jesus said in his word, I give you my joy, I give you my peace. Well, Jesus does give us his joy and peace. I believe our job is, is to guard our hearts. Guard our hearts, guard our, our joy and peace and love, 
and uh, because the enemy is going to want to steal it from you. The enemy is going to want to challenge you with uh, obstacles and, and uh, attacks and whatever else and try and rob you of your joy and peace. And it's your responsibility to keep your joy and peace. So that means resist the devil. Uh, he'll flee. Submit to God. Resist the devil. And start, you know, keep getting the Word of God in you so the Holy Spirit will bring it to your mind. Start being used of God. There's all kinds of things you can do, but do what you would do in a normal garden. Tend the soil. Uh, do everything you can to help it grow. Water it in prayer. Uh, and feed these things. Stir them up so they start being active in your life and, and practice them. Because you can, uh, uh, if you give it attention, you can have joy coming out of your life. Peace, love, patience, kindness, all these things. And when they come out of your life, you know, we, we heard Jesus say, you're the light of the world. Let your light shine. Well, when, when you let these come out of your life, that you're walking in the joy of the Lord, uh, you're walking in kindness, you're, you're letting love and peace rule your life, that's visible. People see that. So you will be a walking witness if you have the fruit coming out of your life. And, uh, you know, G G uh, <laughs> Jesus said, uh, well, actually, it was Peter. Peter said, always be prepared to give an answer for those who will question you about the hope that you have. When they see the light coming out of you and they say, what is it? You can say, I follow Jesus. Anyway, be prepared. Stir these things up. You have it already. Once you're born again, the Holy Spirit's in you. You have all the fruit of the Holy Spirit here. You need to get it out. You need to let it become an evident part of your life. And so there's no law against these things. Um, so anyway, if so, uh, I'll, I'll just repeat this again. If you don't feel like you have love in you or joy or peace, you may need to break up the soil of your heart. You need to water. Uh, know that Jesus is only as far away as the mention of his name. Uh, so ask him for help and in prayer. Uh, Lord Jesus, help me to stir up in my life the fruit so that they will begin to grow and, and come out of me. I've heard it said that me and God make a majority. Uh, if God said it, that settles it. So, therefore, uh, you know, start praying out loud. And, 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 I mean, and again, this is, this is to help you start promoting the fruit in your life, okay? Start praying out loud. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I am a child of God. His Holy Spirit is in me. I have love in me, and it will overflow out of me. I have joy in me, and it will overflow out of me. I have the peace of God because He is my Redeemer. He knows the numbers of my days. He has a plan for my life, and it's a good plan. Lord God Almighty, I thank you, Jesus. I praise your mighty name, Lord Jesus. You said that you would never leave me nor forsake me. I thank you for that. You are an ever-present help in time and trouble. Wherever I go, you are with me. You surround me with your love and your protection. I am a child of God. I have an inheritance. Jesus is mine, and heaven is my destination. As for me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. You know... Speaking God's word out loud just makes everything alive. It, you can change the atmosphere. Sometimes people pray and think, you know what, I don't think my prayers are even getting beyond the ceiling. Stand up and in faith start declaring the word of God, just like that prayer was there. Start declaring, ah, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I am a child of God. You declare it out loud and you'll start changing the atmosphere around you. And just keep up. Don't stop. And uh, thank God, pray for what you need, thank Him for everything He's doing in your life, and as you stand up and in faith declare the promises of God, uh, the atmosphere will change and you'll have breakthroughs. And um, you know what? <laughs> life will never be the same. <clears throat> Get the Word of God deep down in your heart, then pray it. Make declarations into the atmosphere. Do you know you cleanse the atmosphere with your prayers and your declarations? And in all that, the fruit of the Spirit will rise up within you. It will fill your life and pour out of you. Jesus said, let your light shine. The fruit of your life is visible. People will see the fruit and see the light and be drawn to it. They will see the love of God in you. They will see the joy of the Lord in your life. They will see the peace that passes understanding. They will see faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It is in you, 
let it out. Join us next time in the Holy Spirit series for part four, Receiving the Baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is Bob Manuk from RWM Blue Water Ministry declaring blessings on you and yours. Until next time, amen.